In this video, I'm going to cover how to debug the Raspberry Pi Pico using another Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, whilst this might sound a little odd, one of the Picos acts as a debugger and is essentially a USB to serial wire debug converter and allows us to program and debug the target Pico. We can also use the Pico probe to monitor the UART output of the target Pico. So this tutorial will tell you the basics of getting the Pico probe and required toolchain working and some basic debugging to show you how it works. So as a kind of prerequisite to this video, I'm assuming that you already have VS Code set up in such a way that you can build programs for the Pico already. If not, I have a video co covering that topic in the cards above. So to start with, I'll run through a few things that we need in order to get started debugging the Raspberry Pi Pico. Firstly, in terms of hardware, we're going to need two Picos, a breadboard to put them on, and some jumper cables. Then, in terms of software, we need OpenOCD and GDB. You will already have GDB from when you set up the VS Code C toolchain for programming the RP2040. We will also need the LibUSB Win32 USB driver. And finally, we're going to need the Pico Probe UF2 file, which is provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So let's start with OpenOCD. On my website, I have provided a zip file with a pre built version of OpenOCD. It is already configured for debugging the Pico, and there is no need to tinker with it to get it working. All you have to do is extract it somewhere sensible, and in my case, I've extracted it next to where I keep the Pico SDK. Now, for those a bit apprehensive about downloading a zip file from the internet, I completely understand that, and it is possible for you to build your own version of OpenOCD. My folder is, is simply intended as a time saver. You can build your own by downloading the MSYS2 tool collection from their website and then following the steps outlined in Appendix A of the Raspberry Pico Getting Started Guide. You will need to find the libusb 1.0 DLL file from the libusb drivers and paste that into your OpenOCD folder. Now we need to install the USB drivers. Download Zadig from the website linked in the description. Open the file and select the Pico Probe Interface 2 option from the drop down. If you don't see it, then in the Options menu, select Show All Devices, and then you should be able to see it from the drop down now. In the driver box, select the LibUSB Win32 driver and press Install. On mine, it says Reinstall, but that's because I've already done this process to get this guide going. Now, let's flash the Pico Probe firmware onto one of the Picos. Download the UF2 file from the Raspberry Pi Pico website and program the Pico by pressing the reset button and connecting it over USB, then dragging and dropping the UF2 file over. The Pico should now reboot and the onboard LED should be solid green. Now we must wire up the two Picos. Place them both in the breadboard and then wire them up according to the diagram shown in Appendix A of the Pico Getting Started Guide. Firstly, I'm going to power the target Pico using the V-Sys and ground pins on both Picos. Then wire the ground pin on the SWD connectors to the ground pin connected to the Pico Pro. Then wire the UART1 port, which is GPIO pins 4 and 5 on the Pico Pro, to the UART0 port. GPIO pin 0 and 1 on the target Pico. Note that TX connects to RX and vice versa. Then we connect the Pico probe's GPIO pin 2 to the SWCLK pin on the target Pico. And finally, we connect the GPIO pin 3 to the SWDIO pin on the target Pico. The Pico probe is now ready to use. You only have to power the Pico probe over USB and it will provide power to the target Pico. We can also use the Pico Probe as a simple UART serial device to monitor the serial output of the target Pico. Now, in the next couple of steps, we're going to test the toolchain we set up earlier, and this will be a command line interface, but don't worry, shortly we will be moving into VS Code. Open two command prompts. In one of them, navigate to where your openocd.exe application is. In my case, it is C, Pico, open OCD folder. Then use the following command, open OCD, f interface slash picoprobe.cfg, 
F target slash RP2040 dot CFG S TCL. You should see the following output. It is important that you keep this command prompt open. In the other prompt, navigate to a project that you know builds and functions correctly. I'm going to pick one of the Pico examples, the Hello World serial program to be specific. Make sure an ELF file is present. Then use the following command arm nun eabi gdb, then the name of the ELF file, in my case, hello serial.elf. Once gdb has launched, use the following series of commands target remote localhost 3333, load, then use monitor reset init, and then continue. And your program should now be programmed to the target Pico and operating normally. To test this, and in this case the UART functionality of the Pico probe, I will open PuTTY and point it to the COM port that the Pico probe is connected to. We choose a board rate of 115,200, and you can see in the window that opens that the target Pico is operating as intended. You can cl close the two command prompt windows now. Now, let's get VS Code set up. You will need the following plugins. Cortex Debug, CMake Tools, and C++ Tools. You should already have the last two installed, so you probably will only have to install the Cortex Debug plugin. After doing that, open VS Code Settings, and open the settings.json file using the button in the top right of the page, highlighted in red now. Add the following two lines of code to the editor. You can find these lines of code from my website linked in the description. Ensure that the open OCD path is the file path of where you downloaded open OCD to, including the open OCD.exe application. You can now save and close this file. Next, open a project that you want to debug. In my case, for the simplicity of this, uh, this video, I'm simply going to debug a basic LED blink program. Actually, it's the program we wrote in one of my earliest Pico videos. Once open, in the .vs code folder in the Project Explorer, create a JSON file called launch if there isn't already. Copy and paste the boilerplate template from my website into the launch JSON file and adjusting the paths of the last two lines and the path to the build ELF file. The search directory path should be pointed to the TCL folder in the open OCD folder. The RP2040 SVD file is found in the Pico SDK, so point it to where you downloaded the Pico SDK. More specifically, the SVD file itself. You can now save the launch.json file. Now, open the debug and run tab on the left hand side of VS Code. You should see Cortex Debug selected in the top left dropdown. It is important that you build your program before attempting to debug, as in my experience, debugging it first will sometimes cause an error, or you'll be debugging using an older version of your program. So, I will build my Blink LED code now. Ensure that the Pico probe is plugged in and powered on. Press the green play button next to the Cortex Debug dropdown. It will take a few seconds, but soon the blue bar will turn orange, indicating that we are now debugging. Your target Pico has been programmed with your code. It will always pause at the start of the main function, but once you press the continue button on the top toolbar, your program will start operating. In my case, as you can see, the LEDs are blinking on and off. You can set a breakpoint before or during debugging by pressing the red dot next to the line number. The next time the program reaches this point, it will pause, and you can simply resume it with the continue button from the top toolbar. You can remove a breakpoint by simply pressing the red button and it will disappear. On the left hand side, the left hand toolbar, we have the registers and peripheral devices where we can poke around and take a look into what values the registers currently have, 
Above this, we have the variables tab, which contains the values that each variable has in your code, which is a, a little higher level than the registers. Note that this only shows up when the debugger is paused uh, at a breakpoint. So to stop debugging, simply use the stop button on the top of the toolbar. Do remember that if you change your code, you must rebuild it before debugging, otherwise you'll be debugging an old version of your code. So this video covered how to get started debugging the Raspberry Pi Pico. I realized that I didn't cover too much in depth regarding how to properly debug your programs, as that is a topic for a much more in depth video, uh, perhaps a part two. Uh, let me know if you'd like a video like that. If this video has helped you, then please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments below. Thank you and have a nice day.